Theodore Geisel slash Dr. Seuss, a leader in children's literature. A Cat That Came to Play, Boundless Imagination, Trying Something New, Staying Faithful, Saving the Environment, Nazis and Totalitarianism. These are all messages and stories that one man, Theodore Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss, gave life to in all of his children's books. The use of rhyme, imagination, and strong morals and political themes made Dr. Seuss a prominent leader in the history of 20th century children's literature. His legacy is shown through the billions of children who have learned to read using his books and the change in personality his works brought to the reading classroom. A Leader's Start Before becoming a famous author, Geisel worked as a cartoonist. One famous job he had was to make ads for Flip Bug Spray. Later he would become a World War II cartoonist for PM Magazine. Some of these cartoons encouraged the nation to buy war bonds. It was actually the onset of World War II that made Geisel decide to get serious and start writing for children. And to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. That first, first, early, early book, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street was something that, that you realized that his imagination was starting to just gallop along. And when there wasn't anything on Mulberry Street except little houses all looking very similar and nothing going on, he then began to make the most wonderful imaginative fibs as to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street turned out to be. And to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street was written in 1937 and was rejected by 27 publishers before being printed. It was about a boy who walked down his ordinary street and imagined extraordinary things happening. It was originally frowned upon by many adults because the boy is lying about what he is seeing. But when it was published, kids loved it because it promoted their imaginations. Leading the way in likable literature. Between 1937 and 1990, Dr. Seuss wrote 44 children's books, all of which delighted children with their wacky rhymes, plot lines, and pictures, and impressed critics with their subtle messages. In 1940, Dr. Seuss wrote Horton Hatches the Egg, a book about an elephant who promises to watch over an egg as a favor for a bird. He stays loyal to his promise, and as a result, an elephant bird hatches from the egg. In 1950, If I Ran the Zoo was published, a book about a boy who pictured a new kind of zoo with fantastical creatures greatly appealing to the imaginations of children. Every book had something that was morally important, but rather masked, but always there. Seuss's Legacy in the Classroom In the 1950s, there was a cry for a new reader in American classrooms, because the ones used then, Dick and Jane primers, bored children and caused them to dislike reading. As John Hersey pointed out in his 1954 Life magazine article, Why do children bog down on the first R? In this article, he suggested that perhaps the likes of Dr. Seuss could liven up reading in schools. In 1957, Seuss wrote The Cat in the Hat, published by Houghton Mifflin and Random House, in hopes to end all regular classroom primers. It was written with only 236 words from a reading list, but still included all of Seuss's usual entertaining rhymes and pictures. The book sold about 200,000 copies in about a year. Reviewers raved, saying, All the old delightful rhymes and rhythms, the zany illustrations are here. Together they make a book to rejoice seven and eight-year-olds and make them look with distinct disfavor on the drab adventures of standard primer characters. The cat in the hat is elegant nonsense. We were afraid that the limitations Dr. Seuss put upon himself might have shackled his marvelous inventiveness. Quite the contrary.
recommended enthusiastically as a picture book as well as a reader. Complete departure from the usual dull and unimaginative books of this type. The Cat in the Hat was so successful that it was actually replacing old Dick and Jane readers in American classrooms. So Random House decided to start a branch within the company called Beginner Books, which would be dedicated to publishing primers like The Cat in the Hat. The start of Beginner Books and its great potential for success was noted in David Dempsey's 1958 New York Times article, The Significance of Seuss, in which he states, that the beginning of beginner books may well be the biggest thing that has happened to the American classroom since the advent of William Holmes McGuffey readers in 1836. Seuss wrote several beginner books for Random House, which included the famous Green Eggs and Ham, and later he started the branch within beginner books called Bright and Early Books, which were even simpler than beginner books, because Seuss believed that it was never too early to start reading to a child. As time went along, no one at Random House ever touched his books. He would do the book, he would then illustrate the book, or illustrate first and then write it, and he'd ship it east to Random House. No one ever edited it, no one ever touched it, it went right to press. And that had never been done before, and Random House has not done that since. Radical literature, radical leader. Political messages in his books is something he will be remembered for. Yertle the Turtle was written about Nazis and totalitarianism. Yertle, a tyrannical turtle, represents Hitler and rules over all of the other turtles until one speaks out against him. Horton Hears a Who stresses the importance of equality among all people. It also references the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki when a vulture drops a flower that has small people on it, destroying their world. The Butter Battle book makes a very obvious connection to the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union, which Geisel felt strongly about. Critics believe that the Butter Battle book wasn't funny and wasn't suitable for children. The Lorax was the most controversial Dr. Seuss book. It promotes respecting the environment by showing readers the harmful effects of pollution. Some took it as an attack on logging companies and was challenged in schools and removed from libraries. A logger wrote the Truax as a response to this book. Achievements and Legacy during his lifetime, Geisel received various awards for his literature and works. In 1984, he received the Pulitzer Prize for a lifetime of contribution to children's literature. Other of his awards include a Peabody Award, a Laura Ingalls Wilder Medal, and three Caldecott Medals. Today, a Geisel Award is given annually to the authors and illustrators of the most distinguished American book for beginning readers. Daisy had Maisie, My Many Colored Days, Hooray for Diffin' Do for Day. These books were lost pieces of his work that were published after his death. The love of his writing will be continued due to these books and the ones still being reprinted. Several movies have also been made based on his most popular books, and even a Seussical musical. Today, National Read Across America Day is held on Dr. Seuss's birthday, March 2nd. It is a movement to get children and teens reading. Communities and schools nationwide hold Dr. Seuss-themed reading events on this day. Seuss's books are unique for their imagination, wordplay, and radical themes. But the most radical concept Seuss brought to the history of children's literature was the belief that authors of children's books should talk not down to children as kiddies, but talk to them clearly and honestly as equals. He led by this example in his writing. In doing so, he captured audiences across generations, making relatable, entertaining stories that are picked up again and again, even today. This is his legacy.